You know, I hope Daniel Bryan is enjoying his life outside of the ring and in his current role as general manager of SmackDown, husband of Brie Bella and all that other stuff. And, you know, I, I, I got to say, you know, there's a part of me that wishes he was still there because whatever you think of him one way or another, you know, this product definitely needs some star power and to at least some level. Daniel Bryan had a little bit of star power. He had a little bit of something to him. And it's kind of sad to look back at it and think that this is a guy that got to a spot, was really getting to the mountaintop, had basically just summited the mountaintop, and then came rolling down the mountainside like an avalanche. That's unfortunate, you know. And I never hated Daniel Bryan. In fact, I really respected Daniel Bryan. Didn't necessarily like his fans because... So many of y'all acted like petulant, whiny fucking bitches, especially you look back at 2014 to 2015. Go back and look at some of that shit y'all were saying and talking about. And, and it was like, it was enough was enough. So, you know, if anything, it detached me from him and didn't allow me to appreciate him because I was so fucking tired of what other people were saying, pumping this guy up on a pedestal. I mean, we have people comparing him to Stone Cold Steve Austin for fucking crying out loud. I mean... Daniel Bryan was a talented dude and got himself over, you know, and got himself a big spot. But Austin, you know, is an entirely different matter. I mean, that's how crazy this shit got. But nonetheless, Daniel Bryan is what it is. And, you know, I hope, like I said, that he's enjoying his life. And I think he most certainly has been because somebody made a baby. Somebody made a baby. Brie Bella is expecting their first child, and what wonderful and glorious news this is indeed. I hope this is the first of many little future American Dragon Danielsons to roam the earth in the years to come. And on a side note, Daniel, we'll, we'll go government here. Brian, congratulations. That's how it's done. You made her quit her career to stay home and have your babies. Ron Burgundy loves you, and I respect you. That, sir, is a man! That's how you do it. You tricked her. You told her, yeah, come on home. Well, you don't need to work. We can connect with each other more, and we can be around each other, and we can talk about hopes and dreams and feelings and passions and emotions and aspirations in the future. And BAM! A baby right in the pussy. You, sir. Top-notch stuff. Top-notch. That's right. You took her career away from her, and you said your job is now to produce me babies. That's fucking awesome. Awesome stuff. But you have to wonder. I know I most certainly was wondering. What's the gender of this baby? Are we going to get a boy dragon or a girl dragon, basically? And, and this was a pivotal, seminal question because, frankly, so much was on the line. And I know a lot of you are thinking about it. You know, we can't get the American dragon Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan back in an active WWE ring. We'll wake and wait 20, 25 years until we have no hair on the top of our heads for the next Daniel Bryan. I'm sure there was a lot of thought about that. You know, is it going to be a boy or is it going to be a girl? That's a pressing question everybody wants to know. And apparently this week we got our answer. Oh, did we get our answer. And the answer to me is vindication and validation once and for all that Daniel Bryan is a member of The Breakfast Club. Now, let's understand. The Breakfast Club is the elite of elite in all of WWE. You know, people could talk about the clique and all the other shit over the years and all the other factions behind the scenes. The Breakfast Club reigns supreme. The people in The Breakfast Club get decades worth of main event spots. They marry the boss's daughter. They do all that shit. They go off and make movies. Sometimes outside of WWE Studios movies even. The Breakfast Club is where it's at. The Breakfast Club is the thing in WWE and frankly in all of professional wrestling. As a general rule, when your membership includes God, Triple H for those of you that are unaware, 
Batista, Randall Keith Orton. Now just think about this. Triple H, Batista, Randall Keith Orton, John Felix Anthony Cena, and Sheamus. And the honorary retired member, Jesus himself, Shawn Michaels. And you're like, wait. If Sean is older than Triple H, how is Sean, Jesus, and Triple H's God? Let's not worry about the fucking semantics here, okay? The bottom line is, these are the dudes for the past 10, 15 years that have been at the top of WWE. They were the ones that called the shots. They were the ones that ruled the roost. They were the ones that main evented pay-per-view after pay-per-view after pay-per-view, WrestleMania after WrestleMania after WrestleMania. The ability to get membership into that club is almost impossible. It just doesn't happen every day. But you look at somebody like Daniel Bryan, and you would say in many ways he is the antithesis. Antithesis of Breakfast Club. Here's a guy with a huge independent fan base following, and I try to assure you of this much. The Breakfast Club has no time, especially with the active members, for your hardcore fanship, I assure you. No place in that organization for that. But Daniel Bryan, he's he's the one that had a decade plus on the independent scene. He wasn't some big swole dude. Here's a small average looking Joe that goes out there and puts his body on the line every night. Backflips and kicks and twists and going into flaming tables and stuff. Oh, the breakfast club says, surely you just. But it's crazy. Something happened over the past few years. And it's really made me start to wonder if Daniel Bryan's actually a member of the Breakfast Club. Now, hear me, out, hear me out before we get all crazy about it. You know, let's just think about this. Think about it. In a slightly different way, in the Breakfast Club, you know, the Breakfast Club most certainly doesn't want to lose unless it's occasionally to each other and they have to figure out bullshit ways for that to actually happen. And they're most certainly not going to stand by and let somebody go over them clean in a lot of ways. Daniel Bryan got to the point where the fans kind of filled that gap and said, we refuse for him to ever lose. He should beat everybody. He should run through The Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, and John Cena in the same match consecutively at WrestleMania in the main event. That's how awesome Daniel Bryan is. So he's got that. Also look at it, too, from this standpoint. He likes women. Got to like women to be in the breakfast club. If you're John Cena, you like them fat girls, but you gotta like women. Daniel Bryan clearly likes women. What else could make him Breakfast Club worthy? Well, let's look at it. Look at that road to WrestleMania 20 or WrestleMania 30, excuse me. And even a couple of years before that, and some of the programs he worked over the past few years with guys like Sheamus and Randy Keith, Randall Keith Orton and John Cena. He was trained initially by Shawn Michaels. You get to the road to WrestleMania 30, and there's all these obstacles put away, and he goes through Triple H at WrestleMania 30 to get to the main event world title match against Randy Orton and Batista. And he wins. He taps out Batista. Dave Batista is not jobbing to just anybody. Most in particularly is not tapping out to just anybody. Randy Orton is not going to sit there and say, hey, wait a second, I'm in the title match at WrestleMania. I'm just going to let this opportunity slide by to any ham and egger. Triple H most certainly is not going to put over somebody like Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania unless there's a reason. WrestleMania 30 isn't about the streak ending. It's not about Daniel Bryan winning the world title. It's about Daniel Bryan pledging his membership to the Breakfast Club. Think about it. You had to work with God in order to get that seal of approval check. You had to go into the main event of WrestleMania, make the other guys look good, and then ultimately come out on top check. If that doesn't cement his place in the Breakfast Club. You know, pay-per-view after pay-per-view, main event after main event, or in some cases, some main events. But this is a guy that worked with Sheamus at WrestleMania. And in one night at WrestleMania 30, he worked Triple H. Randy Orton, and Batista. Let's not forget the previous year's SummerSlam, where he worked against, oh, that's right, John Cena. And then who came out and screwed him out of the title? Triple H and Randy Orton. That is an awful lot of work with the Breakfast Club over the past couple of years. 
to not wonder if there's some hijinks, not wonder if there's maybe some undercover behind the scenes shenanigans that us mere fans are not aware of. I know some of you like to refer to him as the breakfast club killer, but you almost wonder now if he's not the breakfast club captain. Now you look at him, he's getting paid a very big salary to do very little as a general manager of SmackDown, hosting Talking Smack, it's plenty of free time. That smells like breakfast club to me. All right, so maybe maybe some of you aren't believers. Maybe some of you don't want to see what's in front of you. Maybe you say, how dare you, Schley Daddy? Jeff, he is everything the breakfast club is not. Well, you could take all that shit and flush it down the toilet and shove it straight up your fucking ass because once and for all, Daniel Bryan's place in the Breakfast Club was firmly cemented this week when we found out Daniel Bryan is having a daughter. When you're in the Breakfast Club, you don't get sons. Ask Triple H. He's got three daughters. Ask Batista. He's got two daughters. John Cena, we don't think he has any kids, but if he did, we know they're daughters. I believe Randy has kids, and aren't they all daughters? Shawn Michaels has a daughter and a son, but isn't one of the kids Ginger and the other one it's a son? He's a member of the Breakfast Club. Maybe that's some of the click crap carrying over because Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were able to produce sons. So maybe one of them had to fill in the void for Shawn Michaels when it came to the son department. The most seminal important thing above all else that you could do in the Breakfast Club is thou shalt not have a son before me. That's it. That is the golden rule. You have to get to all those other things till you get to that crowning moment in time. You climb the summit of the breakfast club and you give the world a daughter. You give the world a girl. That's what God does. If God doesn't make a son, Daniel Bryan can either. That is the ultimate team player. That is the ultimate sign of respect for the other members of the breakfast club. And let's face it. Who's dating his wife's sister? John fucking Cena. Him and John Cena are goddamn fishing buddies. Drinking half-calf, decaf, low-calf. My wife's got bigger tits than yours lattes. If John Cena and Nikki Bella ever actually have a kid, it's going to be a girl. A girl. A girl. Ryan Danielson beat him to the punch. He's got a daughter. He's not the Breakfast Club killer. He is the Breakfast Club captain, the Breakfast Club champion. Daniel Bryan, once and for all, has proven his place at the table of the Breakfast Club. So as they're sitting there eating their scrambled eggs and corned beef and hash and grits and bacon and sausage and everything else, and they start talking about their daughters, Daniel Bryan can too, and I think it's a glorious thing, and congratulations to him. And congratulations to the Breakfast Club. You've got your captain now. Gets paid a lot of money to not have to do very much physically at all. And he made a daughter. A daughter. If that doesn't get you in the Breakfast Club, I don't know what the fuck is. Congratulations, Daniel Bryan. There's only three people in the world that can once and for all cement your place in the Breakfast Club. That is Triple H, because he's God. Shawn Michaels, because this shit goes back to the click, and he's the retired honorary member of the Breakfast Club. And then there's me. In order to get into the Breakfast Club, I have to put the stamp of approval on it. And here it is, right here, a big fucking double X estrogen stamp. Daniel Bryan is the Breakfast Club, bitches. Eat shit. <laughs>